world that produces a derivative of horseshoe crab blood. Their blood has a clotting agent that's used to detect minute levels of bacteria. But what's truly surprising is the color. The crab's blue blood is an evolutionary gift that's helped them survive the eons. Male or female? A uh, small male would be good. Okay. Dr. Norman Wainwright has been working with horseshoe crabs for most of his career, studying the remarkable properties of their blood. The beautiful blue color is a result of its blood containing copper as an oxygen-carrying pigment instead of hemoglobin, which contains iron. I'm adding a suspension of E. coli bacteria. At the first sign of bacteria, the crab's blood forms a protective clot. Look at that. This is, this is perfect. This is the butcher crab cells protecting the animal from infection. Any type of leakage of seawater into their blood system would trigger this response, seal the wound, and there actually are proteins in the clot itself that kill the bacteria. They're almost primitive antibiotics. The phenomenon caught the attention of the biomedical community in the 70s. They've been putting it to work for us ever since. Up to a third of the crab's blood is removed during the process, yet most of them survive. One quart of horseshoe crab blood is worth about $15,000. It's a multi-million dollar industry. The clotting agent called lysate is used to test intravenous drugs for bacteria. No IV drug reaches the market without being tested on horseshoe crab blood. It's an FDA regulation. Years ago, the only way to screen for toxins dangerous to humans was to use live rabbits. Feverish bunnies revealed contamination, and the test was slow. Horseshoe crab blood takes an hour tops, and most of the crabs survive the process. Scientists are exploring alternatives that would make bleeding crabs unnecessary, but each day we're finding more ways the horseshoe crab can help us with everything from sutures to contact lenses. In my lifetime, I've had the choice of taking and taking and taking. And with the horseshoe crab, I have the privilege of returning it. I get a chance to return something that has benefited so many people. We're not the only species that's come to depend on the horseshoe crab. They're critical to others, too, like the red knot. It's now May in Brazil. The red knots now May in Brazil. The red knots have built up their fat reserves, and they're now in their breeding plumage. They're ready to begin the longest leg of their epic journey. They'll fly for as many as four days and nights without stopping, mostly over open ocean. With no landmarks to guide them, they'll use the moon, the stars, and the sun. Their departure is mysteriously synchronized with an annual event 4,000 miles north. Here on the Delaware Bay, the waters have warmed and the world's largest population of horseshoe crabs is beginning to spawn. It's here that the red knot has always found the fuel for their journey to the Arctic. And the horseshoe crab has always provided that fuel in the form of eggs. The spawning season is an annual feast. It's a windfall for shorebirds and a great opportunity for biologists. Migrating flocks have just begun to arrive. If the red knots are on schedule, they should be here soon. Horseshoe crabs prefer spawning in the cover of night, but this is the height of their short season. It only lasts a few weeks. They come to shore when the tides are highest to lay their eggs deep in the sand. Swarmed by hopeful males, the female digs down to bury her clutch. The males are smaller than the females, but they have a special claw 
that hooks onto her shell. Since fertilization is external, even unattached males will father some of the eggs. When her clutch is finally laid, the female breaks through the sand. In all the commotion, eggs from prior spawns get unearthed. What the crabs accidentally dig up is what the red knots depend on. As the tide recedes and the crabs retreat, a flock of red knots appears in the sky. They've traveled for four days and nights without stopping. They're exhausted and emaciated. The flock will find a safe place to roost for the night and rest. From all over the world, biologists have come to count shorebirds on the Delaware Bay. The spring migration offers a rare opportunity to assess populations. Many species of shorebirds are in decline, but the red knots that winter in South America are by far the most serious. No one knows how many will make it to the bay this year. For the next week, more flocks of red knots trickle in. Once they're here, they need to eat. They only have about two weeks to refuel and set off again. Their breeding is tightly synchronized with the brief Arctic summer. Their digestive systems have shut down for the long journey. It's here that the horseshoe crab makes all the difference in the world. Their soft eggs are packed with protein and easy to digest. 